This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including fascinating shows like Stalking Hitler's Generals. When Allied commandos launched daring wartime missions to kill or capture German generals, and secret societies, organizations that play a far larger role in our everyday lives than most of us realize, from the Illuminati to Freemasons and Skull and Bones. Go to curiositystream.com forward slash Mark Felton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for our fans, use the promo code Mark Felton and you will save 25% off, which comes to only fourteen ninety nine a year. That's just $1.25 per month. For the very best in history programming, choose Curiosity Stream. Many people assume that with Germany's unconditional surrender on the 8th of May 1945, Hitler's armed forces lay down their arms. Most indeed did. The Jews and Nazi propaganda, two groups didn't completely comply. The first were small groups of Nazi loyalists called Wehrwolves, quite often older Hitler Youth members, who had received some training and arms prior to the war's end as part of a German plan to create a post-war National Socialist resistance movement inside Germany. I've already made a detailed video about this fascinating subject, link in the end screen, but suffice it to say, Wehrwolf was a bit of a damp squib, with only a few attacks in the months after the surrender. However, a potent threat came from a second group, Renegade SS. Some SS units and individuals attempted to avoid surrendering in May 1945 by taking to the mountains of Bavaria and Austria. They did this partly as a result of the wider Wehrwolf campaign, but also because they found that as SS they feared they would be maltreated or executed by the Allies or because they had good reason to want to avoid Allied captivity, such as previous involvement in Nazi war crimes. Some also harboured a deep-seated hatred or resentment towards the occupying Allies, and couldn't accept that Germany had lost the war. For occupying Allied forces, the combination of the factors I've mentioned resulted in years of small-scale attacks on occupation troops and German civilians who work for them. In the US occupation zone of southern Germany and western Austria and the South Tyrol in northern Italy, some 380 incidents were logged by the US Army between the 9th of May 1945 and the 31st of December 1948 that resulted in the deaths of 48 American soldiers with injuries to a further 189. Germany was also dangerous in the years after the war due to gangs of displaced persons, the victims of Nazism, who became lawless refugees who attacked German civilians and US troops alike. SS troops in particular kept showing up in US reports as the instigators of violent attacks on GIs. These groups were well armed with automatic weapons and appeared to be living in mountain huts or camping in forests, and the US Army noted that they were receiving supplies from sympathetic local civilians. On the 10th of May 1945, two days after the official surrender, US troops on patrol in the Perchen Pass, Austria, were fired on by renegade SS soldiers. The following day, two US soldiers were shot dead, their bodies being left laying in an alpine meadow near Schieser in the Harz Mountains in Saxony-Anhalt. US forces took immediate reprisals against local villagers. In mid-May 1945, either SS or Wehrwolves planted a time bomb in the cellar of a US Army billet at Kole Isako in South Tyrol the detonation injuring 22 American soldiers and burning down a battalion command post. Back in the Harz Mountains, a GI was shot and wounded while picking wildflowers in a meadow while off duty. At Drakschied, a small Bavarian village, a US anti-aircraft unit was attacked by German snipers. They were driven off by a strong US response and escaped. The following day, at Grafenau in Bavaria, a US truck convoy was fired upon, the escort returning fire, killing one of the attackers. A couple of days later, the US Army reported that a 17-year-old SS man was apprehended after firing on US troops. The SS man was subsequently tried by a US military court and sentenced to death. 
one of the largest SS attacks occurred on the 25th of May 1945 at Zylan in Bavaria, when Polish displaced persons and local civilians reported to the US authorities that a group of renegade SS numbering 21 well-armed soldiers was in the area. The SS subsequently launched an attack on the American occupation forces. There were no US injuries, but one SS man was wounded and taken prisoner, the rest fleeing into the mountains. US troops checking German civilian IDs at a checkpoint at Max Hüter Heilhof in Bavaria were fired on by an SS man on the 1st of June 1945. Returning fire, the SS soldier was wounded and taken prisoner. Sporadic reports of SS in the Bavarian mountains continued to be received by the US authorities. On the 21st of July 1945, the bridge at Unken, Zellamsee, near Salzburg in Austria, was partly demolished by an explosive charge planted by SS troops thought to be skulking in the hills and mountains thereabouts. This was the last attack attributed directly to renegade SS troops, but violent incidents would continue for years as the US occupation was resisted by a few fanatical individuals and secret groups of Nazis. As for the organized bands of SS in the mountains, most were never caught and appear to have disbanded in the months and years after the war's end, melting into the civilian population with a few undoubtedly leaving the area for new lives elsewhere. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.